the Carolina Hurricanes on Tuesday night played their last game of the regular season and more so featured some debuts and looking forward to what the future looks like for the Hurricanes. That and much more on a Wednesday edition of Locked on Hurricanes. Your Locked on Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to a Wednesday edition of Locked On Hurricanes, your team every day and part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you to the everyday for making this your first listen of the day. As always, I'm your host, Zach Martin, and uh, I am the Carolina Hurricanes beat writer over at the Hockey Writers, where I take care of all that socials and some sub stacks for them over there. And I'm also the host of The Search Cast, which is a weekly show. Just one episode a week, not your normal five days a week that you see here on Locked on Hurricanes. So if you want to go check that out, please do so. Wednesday's episode is going to just go over mainly the debuts of some, you know, the future core of the Carolina Hurricanes despite losing 6-3. The bigger story is more so those guys who were able to get a chance in their first ever NHL games. Go over basically what the season was for the Carolina Hurricanes and all of that good stuff. Before we jump into anything with this episode, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On AHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So the Carolina Hurricanes on Tuesday night had a dual debut with the additions of Jackson Blake and Bradley Nadeau to the lineup. That's how basically a lot of the regulars sit out and having some young guys come in and more so the healthy scratches over the last weeks were able to, to draw in the lineup as well, like just Barry Cook and Yemi, Brandon Lemieux, Dylan Coughlin got called up from Springfield uh, on his loan to play as well, and Tony D'Angelo and a bunch of other guys were able to come in in the lineup, and a lot of the regulars kind of sat out. So you kind of, that's where you saw the lineups for the four core where they were. But the biggest story was the fact that while Scott Morrow, Scott Morrow was able to play his second game for the Hurricanes, it was more so in the fact that Jackson Blake and Bradley Nadeau, the players from the Hurricanes sent from North Dakota and Blake and Maine and Bradley Nadeau, were able to make their NHL debuts. And um, this marks the sixth time since relocation that multiple Hurricane scares have made their NHL b- debuts in the same game, which it's crazy to think about the fact that this isn't the first time that the Hurricanes were able to do that. And the fact that there was five other times you saw guys making their debuts together for the team since being relocated from, the, from Hartford in 1997. The other ones that were of note was – Back in October 7th of 2000 against the Washington Capitals, Joseph Vasacek and Nicholas Valin made their debuts together. February 26th, 2003 against the, at that point, Phoenix Coyotes, not Arizona, but actually Phoenix was Thomas Kirka and Mike Zigomanis were able to make their debuts together. And then October 7th, 2010 against the Minnesota Wild, it was Zach Dalpy and Jeff Skinner. October 10th of 2014 was against the New York Islanders was Patrick Brown and Victor Rask. And then the final one was on October 7th, 2017 against the Minnesota Wild again. This time, Hayden Fleury and Yane Kukinen. So some really good company for Jackson Blake and Bradley Nadeau to join a list of guys who were able to make their debuts together. And surprisingly, the fact that it happened on October 7th, Three separate times going from 2000 to 2010 to 2017. I thought it was a very interesting stat, just even looking into those debuts that you had this, you had three days completely the same, but spread out over 10 and then seven years apart. You had three separate games on the same day, years apart, with multiple debuts at the same time. And overall, I mean, if you really look at how the guys played, they played really well. You know, you could see that in the game against Columbus, you could tell right away that Jackson Blake and Bradley Nadeau are going to be really good hockey players, give them some more time to get used to playing, you know, the long rigor seasons of an actual AHL, NHL season compared to 
what you saw in college. College, they don't play as many games. You're playing less than 40, less than 50 games in a season. And now you go to the AHL, NHL, and you're looking at 82 games in the regular season. Then you're going into playoffs and all that stuff too. So it's a big jump for guys like that to go from college to pro. And I think just even giving them one game to see what how they do, because it's the game where the Hurricanes already know. They have this they have the second, you know, Metro spot locked up. The Rangers won in on Monday night to get the president's trophy, win the Metro division. At that point, you're the Hurricanes, and I even previewed it on Tuesday. You know, maybe you could have seen some of the regulars come in and stuff like that because you didn't really know what the Hurricanes wanted to do. And throughout the day, you, you kind of saw the pregame skates. You kind of saw what the line, line would look like. And it was pretty evident a lot of the guys who you thought would probably play were sitting out, taking the night off, which it's not really surprising if you think about it, like I said, because what else do you really have to play for at that point? You already know what your playoff fate is. You want everyone to, you want your regulars to be healthy. Yeah, you might throw a couple guys out there who are usual, the usual regulars, just that way you can have a team to line up and stuff. But, you know, Max Comtois comes up from Chicago. Dylan Cogna said Dylan Cogna came up from Springfield from his loan. A bunch of the rookies come in. A bunch of the healthy scratches come in. Spencer Martin's in that. Which I said Monday wouldn't be surprising if the Hurricanes threw him in there just because it's against a former team, gives Freddie and Peter Kachek up a night off and stuff like that. So it's not really a surprise that that's how the Hurricanes kind of played it out. And even with that, though, just you know, real quick thing is the fact that three players were able to play all 82 games this season for the Hurricanes. Brent Burns, Jordan Marnuk, and Dmitry Orlov were the three guys that were all able to play all 82 games, and the fact that Seth Jarvis and Jacob Slavin were guys who just fell one game short because they held, you know, they were held out tonight as healthy scratches to make sure that they were ready to go for the playoffs, which makes sense. But you know, guys like that want to play all 82 games because you saw them do it last year, but it wasn't the case. Those three of guys of Burns, Martinuk, and Orlov were the ones that to do it. But big props to them. And it's more so just the fact of how exciting it was tonight, too, with how you saw the young guns. You saw what the future core looks like for the Hurricanes. You saw that, okay, now you can see what Jackson Blake can do. You know, while, yes, he's on the fourth line, he is still able to see the ice, get the feel of what NHL hockey is like. You saw Bradley Nadeau. He came in. He played really, he played really, really well. And the fact that he played in 19 minutes and eight seconds tonight, second among all Hurricanes forwards. And you're talking about a guy like Bradley Nadeau, who's 18 years old, very close to 19. I think from I think is on Tuesday night, he was 18 years old in 347 days. And he has become the seventh player in team history since relocation to make his AGL debut at 18. The other guys that do it, Eric Stahl against the Florida Panthers in 2003, Jeff Skinner against Minnesota in 2010, Elias Lindholm in 2013 versus Detroit, Noah Hannafin October 15th against Nashville, Martin Nietzsche on October 17th against Edmonton, and Andre Svechikov October 2018 against the New York Islanders. So Bradley Lindholm is joining another list of guys at 18 to make their debuts in to play 19 minutes in eight seconds, which is second on the team, that really shows a lot of how good Rod Brandmore felt of how he played. And you can see why he did so well at Maine. You know, we talked about it last week. We were going over the signings of him, Jackson Blake, and Scott Morrow. It's the fact that he played really well at Maine. You could see why he played really well with the Penticton Vs up in the BCHL, the British Columbian Hockey League, and the juniors you know, over 100 points in 50-something games, and you saw how, why he played so well in Maine. First guy to get 40 points since 2006, 2007, the most guy to get that many points in a season since 2014, 15, or 15, 16. And to be able to put that many minutes in, in your NHL debut is really huge. I don't care if it's against the Columbus Blue Jackets, it's still a pretty good accomplishment for the fact that you were able to go do that as an 18-year-old, put up that many minutes and kind of open eyes of a lot of people to be like, okay, this dude could be legit. He could, he might be legit. Like, that's why the Hurricanes were able to get him where they did. 
Do you see that he's a good hockey player? And the future is very exciting for him and Jackson Blake and Scott Morrow because there was a point that Scott Morrow's shot went on net and Bradley Nadeau was able to put it, almost put it away, but it was on the line. Unfortunately, Jet Greaves of Columbus kept it out, and we were kind of held short of a debut first career NHL goal for, for Bradley Nadeau and even a first career point out of Scott Moore. Unfortunately, it wasn't the case, but to be able to have a chance like that and be able to play the way they did and be able to get the minutes, it only makes you excited. And I know a lot of people have this very mixed feelings of like, okay, like you, yeah, you want to win, you want to keep the winning streak going, you want to get up to six, you want to end on a high note. It's Columbus. You know, you want to try to go for points, yada yada yada, all that. You you were hoping to see Seth Jarvis get seventy points. Unfortunately, he didn't. You you wanted to see. You know, Sebastian Ajo get 90, didn't do it, finished with 89, still really good, and you know, can't really scoff at that. But it's just one of those things where, you know, you, you got to see the young guys, and I think it's what mattered the most was able to see guys like that. And even being asked about his NHL debut, Bradley Nadeau said it was a fun night. Unfortunately, we didn't come up with the win, but there were a lot of positives take away from that game, and that just goes to – it gives you a, a mindset of how he views his game, how he really wanted to do something. And it makes you really excited for what the future holds when you have guys like, you know, Brown and Adeau, Scott Morrow, Jackson Blake, you know, every and all the other guys that got coming through the system too. It really, if you're a Hurricanes fan, you have to be really excited for what the future holds for this team. And for me, it's one of those things where, yeah, you want to win, but you got to see the young guys, and you want to see how they do. You want to see, okay, yes, it's one game, but how do you hold up? And from what it seemed like Scott, like Scott Morrow in his second game did really well. Jackson Blake, for all from what we could see, played really well too. And like I said, <laughs> Brad Lindo gets over 19 minutes in his debut, has a couple scoring chances, and was. Having you know Mike Van Scout on Chip Tracy all broadcasting, this guy is good. He is legit. You know, in the future, very really bright when you have those three guys. You got Felix Under Storm coming eventually. You also got you, know, you got your goalies where they're at. Pierre Kachekov. You know, you got Yana Peretz coming eventually. Jacob Von Dress is with Sudbury. But then you also have your other young guys. You know, Seth Jarvis is still 22. Martin Nietzsche and Andres Feshikov and just Barry Coke and the Amaral under 25. Sebastian Rao is 26. Yeah, you're going to have some veterans that are going to be out the door within probably this summer and next summer. But then the next wave is so good because of how the scouts are finding them and everything else. It makes you really, really excited to see what the future holds. And yeah, this is a game we wanted to win, but you got to see the prospects. And the prospects did well in all the tens and purposes, and that's that's all you can take out of it is they played really well. Rod Bradmore saw it, you know, the broadcast saw it, and that's all you can really ask for. And now that the fact that the regular season is now over, now you get to turn your eyes to the playoffs and all that other stuff. But before we get into the playoff stuff, we have to review the season, and we'll do that here in a second for a segment two on a Tuesday on a Wednesday edition of Locked On Hurricanes. Game time is now in an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lower price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. And the one thing I really like about it for the fact is it's easy to find and buy MLB tickets and for every kind of event in your area area you're talking concerts other sporting events anything you can think of game time is the place to be and like i said with the last minute deals you save up to 60 percent off buying last minute for sports concerts comedy theater etc even their flash deals you save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event and with even zone deals save even more when you choose a section and let game time choose the seats for you and the, one of the things I really like, too, is the seat views. You get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy it. And with the game time ticket coverage, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, 
and use code Locked on NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Term supply again. Create an account and redeem code Locked on NHL. That's L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to a segment two of Locked On Hurricanes. Your team every day. So before you know, we turn the sights on to the playoffs and all that stuff. We got to talk about what the season was for the Carolina Hurricanes from 2023 and 2024. So the Hurricanes finished the season 52, 23, and seven for 111 points. They do fall three points shy of the President's Trophy winning Metro Division winning New York Rangers, who did finish with 114 points. You know, they got three less overtime losses compared to the Hurricanes. That's kind of where you get your three points. But for the Hurricanes, with a point percentage of point six seven seven, and the, with a goal differential of plus 63, and then when you look at that over the entire league, you got the Florida Panthers with a plus 65, and then you have the Dial Stars with plus 63 and the Edmonton Oilers with plus 64. The Hurricanes were, by all intents and purposes, top three in the league in terms of, you know, of a goal differential. They had the best goal differential in the Metro division with the New York Rangers at a plus 53. And then it was, the, you know, New York Islanders finished with the minus 18 capitals of the minus 37. The Pittsburgh Penguins actually finished with a plus five and missed, still missed the playoffs. The Philadelphia Flyers are the minus 26, like I said. And then, you look at the Columbus Blue Jackets things with a minus 63 and the New Jersey Devils with a minus 19. And if you look at how the team played on home and away, the Hurricanes were 27, 10, and 4 at home, and they were 25, 13, and 3 on the road. I mean, if you really want to look at how they played overall in the season, you really couldn't ask for more out of a team who was able to go and put up 111 points finish with a plus 63 in goal differential and have a really good home and road record that they did. Yes, you would want, you would love to win the Metro. You would have done, you would love to do it three times in a row. That would have been a fourth straight division title. And those are, are unfortunately snapped because the Rangers did win the division and all that stuff. And yes, you got to play the New York Islanders again, which like I said, make sure to tune into Friday's show with me and Gil Martin. From Locked On Islanders, we're going to do our crossover show, so make sure to tune in that one. That drops in a couple of days. But if you really want to look back in the season, you know, you look at how the season started. You know, you go on the West Coast road trip, does it really end like how you want it to? You know, hard fought shootout win against the Kings, had a battle against the Sharks. Lose big to the Anaheim Ducks. Not really how you how you want it to go. Frederick, Frederick Anderson goes out pretty early, misses over forty plus games. Now you're down to Antti Ranta and Pierre Kachekov. At some point, you know you those guys get sick, those guys get hurt. And you see, you know, if Perrette's come up a little bit, doesn't really play a whole lot. Then you get you know those guys back, and then you get that disastrous start to the Western Canadian road trip where you go over four. You lose to the Winnipeg Jets. You lose to the Calgary Flames in a comeback fashion against the you know, Flames. Come back and win in a comeback game. You know, lose a really tough one to the Jets, and then you know you, the Canucks game didn't really go how you wanted to. You know, tie it up, lose it very late. Then you have that players only meeting, and then all of a sudden the team just turned it around. And it goes from a power play that wasn't great and a penalty kill that was basically couldn't just couldn't the best penalty kill in the league that you can think of over the last couple of years couldn't do anything. And now it's like, okay, what's the, what's going to happen? You know, what's you know, goaltending isn't really there. The special teams isn't really doing it. Basically, in terms of the offense, you're leaning on Tabo Terra Vine and just Barry Kokaniemi. You know, Seth Jarvis was kind of scoring. Sebastian Al had a slow start. And at that point, you, you know, you're getting nervous. Like, like what's going to happen? And like I said, you you get out of 
you finish the rest of that road trip after Western County, go to Ottawa, win against them, win against Detroit, and then just the Hurricanes start a massive run that you know saw the saw the best penalty kill cup at first. Power play goes into the top three and just played the most lights out hockey you can think of, you know, big winning streaks. Then, you know, Rob Wings in January, uh, Frederick Anderson might be back because everyone thought he was out for the whole season with his blood clotting issue. You know, starts ramping up in February. Then all of a sudden, you know, get to the trade deadline. Go get Jake Gensel on a trade from Pittsburgh. You actually lose Michael Bunting. You lost Vasily Ponomarev. You know, you lose guys like that. And then you get Ty Smith. You get Jake Gensel. And then Frederick Anderson's back. Goes and gets a win in his first game against the Montreal Canadiens 4-1 which then starts a seven-game winning streak for him. Go get Evgeny Kuznetsov for a draft pick in like 2026 for a third, a third, like a third rounder. He comes in. You play hockey every other day from the day after the trade deadline through the end of March. 11-2-1 through that stretch. <laughs> like, and like, welcome to the Hurricanes of Gay Kuznetsov. To go through a stretch run like that, where it's you know, haven't played hockey in a month, and now it's now you get to play hockey every other day with three back to backs thrown in there. And they played well, they played great. Like I said, 11 wins in those 14, 23 of 28 points. You really couldn't ask for anything like that for the Hurricanes. You end March on a high note, you're, you're, you're right back in a hunt for the, for the division title. You're even talks about winning the President's Trophy for the first time. Talks about going number one in the Eastern Conference, depending on how Florida and Boston and Toronto do and stuff like that. Ultimately, yes, fall short. Didn't get the Metro. Didn't get the Presidents. And they get to play the New York Islanders again. And you know what? It's fine. You know, it doesn't really matter who you play because it's a, it's a gauntlet from start to finish on no matter who they're playing round one. And now you get Aho versus Aho for the second time. Totally no, it's totally fine. But you look at how the team was at the start of the season. You're nervous after the West after the West Coast trip. Does it end great? Sebastian Aho is out for three games. You know, Andres Fetchikov misses the first three games, comes back, gets hurt, misses another few. And then you come into the new year. Martin Nietzsche is out for five games because he got hurt during a practice. Frederick Anderson's out for. <laughs> 40 plus games. Andres Kov's out again. He's he like he's played, I think, night. He's played in less than 60 games for the Hurricane. He missed so much time this season. And you look at the injury bugs they had to go through. Anti Ranta goes from being sent down to Chicago, then back up, and then sent back down when Frederick Anderson's back. They go get Spencer Martin, and Spencer Martin plays great hockey for the Hurricanes. I was like, okay, you know, it's a, it's an interesting pickup. You know, it's just a depth piece that they needed goaltending because they don't know what's going on with the goaltenders because Pierre Kachekov's getting, you know, tired because he's playing almost every game. And Toronto struggling. Spencer Martin comes in and does his thing, shuts it down, has a great record starting out. You know, he's 4-1 and or Frederick Anderson comes back. Unfortunately, and Toronto has the odd man out, goes to Chicago, finishes up. This, he's still with them now as the regular season wraps up for the Hurricanes. But the, the run that you see from the Hurricanes, it gives you hope for how the playoffs are going to be. You got the Islanders round one. It's still not confirmed if it's going to be a Saturday start for the playoffs or a Sunday start for the playoffs for the Hurricanes. But they're back at it for the sixth time. You clinch in a 4 nothing win against the Detroit Red Wings. Fought until the end to where it came down to the second to last game of the season to know if the, Hur- if the Rangers win – Divisions theirs, presidents trophies theirs, or if they lose, then it's in your it's in your hands. Destiny's in your hands to do what you need to do. And unfortunately, it came up short for all those. But you're in the playoffs. You knew who your first round opponent is, and you were able to see the young guys play. And just to, just to see the turn of a rocky start at the beginning of the season for the first two months, and you end it from December, from the middle of November, mostly December, mainly December. On until the until the end of the regular season, first in penalty kill, second on the power play. Could not ask for more. And honestly, you've got to be really excited for how this is going to be and all that good stuff. 
So we're going to go into segment three, kind of tidying up some other storylines that came around for the Hurricanes before I wrap up this edition of you know, Locked on Hurricanes. And we'll get to all of that here in a second on a Wednesday edition of Locked on Hurricanes. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heist, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. The Smash It mobile game, Monopoly Go, lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack an open community chest and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there. Put on your game face and download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. Welcome to the third segment of Locked on Hurricanes, your team every day. So for this last segment, we're going to go over, you know, just a kind of like a points update for the team, you know, kind of looking at, you know, your goals, leaders, your assists, points, plus, minus, all that stuff. We're not going to go through the entire list because no one wants to be here forever. But go through the top five of the team in terms of goals, like I said, assists, points, plus, minus, all that good stuff. So in terms of goals, Sebastian Ajo led the way for the Hurricanes with 36, and then Seth Jarvis was 33, Tavo Teravine with 25, and then Martin Nietzsche with 24, kind of rounding out that group of guys. In terms of assists, Sebastian Ajo with 53, Brady Shea with 34, Seth Jarvis with 34, and then Brent Burns with 33. And then in terms of overall points, Sebastian Ajo, 89, Seth Jarvis, 67, Tavo Teravine with 53, and Martin Nietzsche with 53 and the plus minus wise <laughs> once again Sebastian Ajo plus 34 Jarvis plus 23 and then you had Jacob Slavin with a plus 21 and Brent Burns with a plus 19 and the stat that you really can overlook is Seth Jarvis 13 power play goals nine game winning goals which his nine game winning goals is second to Sebastian Ajo's 10 but the fact that he got 13 power play goals says a lot and then even looking at shorthanded goals Seth Jarvis with two, but then the big surprise, which is kind of fun to think about, is Jacob Slavin also got two himself. So that's kind of exciting to see how that worked out. But those are kind of like your top five guys. If you had to ask me what the Hurricanes MVP of the regular season would be, the, the money answer would be everyone would probably say Sebastian Ajo for the fact that you look at how he finished with 89 points. You know, he was one shy of 90, career high for him and all that stuff. And you, you kind of expect that, Sebastian Ajo, because of how he played. And I would say that, yes, he is your MVP of the regular season for the Carolina Hurricanes. Breakout guy has to be Seth Jarvis, going from where he was. You know, everyone thought, you know, he had a sophomore slump. You know, is he actually good? All that stuff. Goes out and gets a career highs and goals assists, points, plus, minus, power play goals, and game winning goals for the Carolina Hurricanes. That is easily hands down your comeback, your breakout player of the year. Comeback player of the year has to be Frederick Anderson. I don't care what you have to say for the fact that he missed over 40 games, comes back, plays lights out hockey from start to finish, you know, sub one, two goals against, save percentage in the 930s. That's that's all you can really ask for out of your comeback player in Frederick Anderson. And most improved, I say Jack Jury. Jack Jury was your most improved guy. You know, he kind of was snake bitten at the beginning of the season, but over as the year progressed, he got better and better. And he was someone that the Hurricanes really like to rely on. It showed. So those if you were to give away some regular season like awards, that's what it'd be for the Hurricanes. MVP is Sebastian Ajo. Breakout Seth Jarvis, comeback player Vesna is 
Comeback player is definitely Frederick Anderson. I say Vezina is you know, Pierre Kachekov, how he played great all season while Freddie was out. And Toronto was kind of struggling. And then you know, they also got Spencer, Spencer Martin. And then most approved has to be Jack Drury, hands down. So, like, like I said, those are the awards you get. Overall, a great regular season for the Hurricanes, 111 points, 52 wins. That's all you can really ask for. That's four straight – just the fact that you get three straight 50 plus win seasons in a row, six straight playoff appearance. Now you get the Islanders again. And that's that's all we're looking forward to now is the playoffs. Now you get the Islanders coming up next and all that good stuff. So thank you to the everyday for making this Wednesday edition your first listen of the day. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can follow me at one true Zach. That's O and true Zach. It's spelled out as the number itself. If you want to follow the podcast, make sure to go to LO, score, LO underscore Hurricanes on Twitter as well. And if you go to my personal link tree in my bio on Twitter, you can find all the links to this podcast, Locked on Hurricanes, my other podcast, The Surge Cast, and where you can find my writing over at The Hockey Riders and all the other good stuff as well. And then if you're on the YouTube side of things, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't miss a video. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button because that would really – Really appreciate it because we are on the road to 1,000 subscribers. Because it currently, last I looked, we're at 793, so we're getting closer as each day passes. So we're trying to get to 1,000. And if you could, please make sure to leave a five star rating on wherever you listen to your podcast and, leave, and make sure to leave a review. Because if you do leave a review, I don't know, I might just read it on the podcast. But until next time, guys, thank you, the everydayer, for making your Wednesday edition of Lockdown Hurricanes, your first listen. Until next time, let's go, Kings.